In this episode, we'll install forward controls on this Triumph motorcycle. Hey folks, I'm Custom Chess for Roma Custom Bike and I want to welcome you to this motorcycle fabrication video. The installation of some custom forward controls on a Triumph Bonneville. By the end of this episode, we'll have made this. A custom support made from scratch that we'll use to install the forward controls. While we're at it, we'll move the original brake pump and we'll bleed and reset the brake hydraulic system. It will be a heck of a job, so stick around till the end. As you can see, we have already modified this bike quite a bit, starting from lowering the seat and restyling the entire tail section of the bike. My girl is right next to her to keep morals up before surgery. Let's start by understanding exactly what we'll do. What we have is a universal forward control kit that we have bought a while back. But to make it work, we have to fabricate some sort of bracket that will position the foot peg in the right place. We'll use these four bolts, set by the factory for I don't know what, to connect our structure to the frame, and we'll make it rigid enough. I can visualize the project by gesturing, but for you guys, we have prepared some visual aid. The factory brake control is here, but we want it here. So, along with it, We'll also need to move the pump and the old reservoir that you can see in its original position. The same on the other side, the shift control needs to go from here to here. Using only some round and flat stock and a bit of creativity, you can achieve some pretty amazing results. Everything, of course, in full Roma custom bike style. <laughs> Being this quite an elaborate project, I've summoned the great Polsky Rage. He's great at welding and metal shaping, and his skills will be extremely valuable on this project. While I get to work removing the brake pump that we'll need to relocate along with the lever, Polsky Rage begins evaluating how to fabricate the plate that will support the entire structure. After getting all the necessary measures, he starts drilling the mounting holes on the drill press. He starts with a smaller drill bit and it increases the size until it reaches the desired diameter hole. As soon as we put it on the bike to check the alignment, we realize that we need it to be a little bit further out, not to interfere with the frame down tubes. This piece of 10 mm thick stock is just the right thickness that we need, a couple of spot welds will ensure that it stays in place while we work on them. Drilling through this thick stock is turning out to be a lot for my small drill press, but Polsky has his own way to refrigerate the drill bit. <laughs> Nothing works better than some good old beer. <laughs> you never stop learning in life, do you? Now that we have a solid base to build on, we can start building what until now has been only air sculpting and wishful thinking. It's time to get this stuff done for real. And it doesn't get any realer than 18 mm thick round stock and 8 mm thick flat stock. I think that even with the long reach that we're going to do for the structure, it will be plenty strong. After deciding how far out we want to place the controls, Polsky Rage cuts down the round stock to size and he welds them together. He brought them already bent because at his workshop he has a bigger vise needed to bend them at 90 degrees. Not knowing how we would actually use them, he left them long. Now that we know a bit more about our structure, he can cut them to size and weld them together so to form something like a letter C. 
Those of you that have watched this series for a while know that in the shop we have both the TIG and MIG welders. But for this project we have decided to go for stick welding to prove that even with cheaper equipment you can achieve good results. After a bit of cleanup of the welds, the bars are ready. I mark up the middle of both the bars and the plate so that we can align them together. With the help of a big magnet and a level, we make sure that everything is in position to spot weld them in place. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Ah, ha. <laughs> pain is part of the fabrication process. How they say, no pain, no gain. Anyway, after the first stack weld, we still have a bit of movement to play with and adjust things before the next tacks. The same process went into the second support. Before continuing with the work, I have some pretty amazing news to tell you. Starting in September, we'll be launching the new DIY web series called Roland Master Maker. With the valuable support of Roland DG Mid Europe that has given me the free access to their equipment, from the printers to the mills and to their knowledge and support database, in each episode I will be exploring a DIY manufacturing project that spans outside the motorcycle realm. This will allow me to document projects of a larger interest, but retaining the Roma Custom Bike spirit. So, don't forget to subscribe and to click the little bell, so that you will receive a notification as soon as I post a new video. Thank you to Roland for this great opportunity, and a special thanks goes to you guys for helping me getting to this point. Now, let's get back to work. Now that we have something tangible to look at, I need to check if we are going the right way or if we need to adjust things around. So I jump on the bike and I see if the position is okay or if there is something in the way of reaching the foot pegs. But everything seems okay. We try to figure out how we're going to fabricate the surface onto which the foot pegs will bolt on. And Polsky Rage suggests that we weld the plate between the upper and lower support and we give it a diagonal cut to finish it off. For the brake side we decide to use the plate to support both the control and the brake pump. <laughs> we just don't know how yet. So we take everything apart and we're right back into the shop. To better execute Polsky's idea we decide to remove the top support to weld the plates in and there is nothing better than slow motion to watch a spark shower. Very hypnotic guys, but I'll tell you, welding in slow-mo looks good too. All right, that's it for the slow-mo break. Now, let's get back to work. Pulsy Rage begins welding the first plate. The project itself is not that complex, but the difficulties arise when it comes to precision and alignment. So to make sure the rest will be top-notch, he checks and levels each piece many times before welding. Didn't I tell you these guy's skills would have come in handy or what? Once satisfied with how things are, Polsky cuts out the extra material and uh, using a grinder, he shapes the cut so that it follows the curvature of the band. The same is done with the brake side, with the exception of the shape of the plate that will need to hold the brake, pump and old reservoir. Polsky gets all artistic on this side too and he shapes the plate to fit in with the contour of the round stock. 
every detail is so important for the final result. Even in simple projects, attention to detail is what can really take it to the next level. Now that the plates are in place, we can weld back the top C-bar. The double tube design is both for strength and rigidity, but also to match the double tube design we did under the seat when we lowered it. Once again, details, they're important. The structure finds its way back onto the bike and after drilling the hole for the actual foot peg, we try to figure out how are we going to secure the brake pump. It has to be roughly here. Initially, we wanted to extend the plate to support the pump. But Polsky thinks it's going to look better if we extend the actual round stock. It will give it a cleaner look and it will place the pump in the right spot. Once we made the decision, the part is back in the shop for welding. Easy peasy for the great Polsky rage! <laughs> The beauty of post-production is that, with a blink of an eye, the part is right back on the bike. And while Polsky works, I show my level of maturity. <laughs> we we'll check the pump's position one more time, and we can finish it up. Two screws are welded directly on the frame, and they will make sure the pump is very easy to install and service. We take some measurements because we are repurposing the original brake link, but it needs to be shortened and rethreaded. Everything is coming together and it seems like it's gonna work good. Now we need to find a spot for the oil reservoir, and while our camera operator is busy taking this astonishing floral time lapse, very beautiful indeed, we have already figured out where and how to put it. But we can still document the finishing touches. Last assembly for the brake system, I hope, and everything seems to work. Keyword, seems. <laughs> but I have to say, they were kicking ass. Polsky Rage is a true master of fabrication. Now that the brake side is done, we need to take care of the shifter side. But for that, along with the painting and the finishing touches that include the bleeding of the brakes, you will have to wait for part two of this episode. I like to invite you to subscribe to the channel click the like button and check out our other videos of the series. I'm Custom Chess for Roma Custom Bike and I'll see you next time!